Good day, people. We're here to talk about palpation, uh, not only to identify static landmarks, but also in order to create treatment. So what we're going to do, as we do with many other things, <coughs> is we're going to look at some general concepts to guide palpation, to help you deal with common problems with palpation. One of the common problems with palpation is that a lot of the bony landmarks that are taught, that, are, that we suggest in educational settings that people use or practitioners use to identify another structure such as the iliac crest to identify L4. Through research what we've proven or what we've seen demonstrated is that these are not particularly accurate ways. They're not ways that can be truly trustworthy. And so as an example within the lumbar region if you take the sacrum as the base of the lumbar region or where the lumbar region stops the sacral base, the top of the sacrum. If you go one bony landmark up in the midline, you have absolutely no clue if that is L4, L5, or L6, depending on how that person's built. You wouldn't know that unless you had imaging to prove one way or the other. So if there's a basic problem with knowing how many lumbar vertebrae a person actually has, and then you count up, right? what you may end up doing is confusing yourself. If somebody has six lumbar vertebrae, where you think L1 is could be L2. Uh, you could also have a person who has a 13th rib on L1. You don't know these things without imaging, so there's basic problems with using bony landmarks to count a specific vertebrae and then make a defined statement. It's not to say that you can't identify many structures, but you can't be 100% sure just say what vertebral level it is. So we want to build that into how we identify structures or the things that we'll say definitely versus the things that we'll leave to understand that we have still have questions that need to be answered and they may only be answerable with appropriate imaging such as an x-ray or an MRI or a CT scan, whatever it may be. Within manual practice, that's outside of our hands in most cases. That's where we would require another healthcare professional to aid us to provide that information. Now understanding that certain bony landmarks are not as trustworthy as we would like them to be. What we have shown, or what has been shown in research, is that using multiple bony landmarks within a given region, or multiple landmarks, whatever they may be, will allow greater accuracy with palpation. So again, we want to build that into our concepts for palpation, that using more than one piece of information helps to triangulate or more accurately target something, whatever it happens to be that we're looking for. Again, we have a clear lack of certainty whether or not that that's actually true. That multiple bony landmarks lead us properly to the specific bony landmark that we're looking at. So we understand that more information helps us triangulate better, but it's still not as accurate as we may want to claim it is. Now all that being considered, we have three general statements or three general kind of catchphrases that we're able to use to help us guide palpation while including the information that specificity of palpation or specifically specificity of say vertebral palpation and specific levels and counting them is not as accurate as we would like it to be because there's information we just don't have as manual practitioners from the outside. So the first catchphrase or the first tagline, specificity is not the number one necessity. What does that mean? It means that we know for sure that we will not always be correct in the specific structure that we're targeting or the specific level that we claim we're, we're working with. So if we know that we're not always correct, what we need to do is accept that and build that in. So specificity is not the number one necessity. What's the number one necessity in osteopathic manual therapy? Is identifying lack of motion and restoring that motion to the best of your capacity through many methods. Now, I would say that that's true of almost all other manual therapeutic professions, is identifying a lack of motion and restoring that motion. Uh, some people may call it functional range, whatever you want. The reality is we're looking for lack of motion and then return to that. So if we know that we're not as accurate as we need to be or as we claim we may be with identifying a specific structure, what we can say is that specificity is not the number one necessity. You need to know the region that you're in and the probability that the structure that you're palpating is likely this structure versus that structure. It's, a, it's an ideal thing to do, however we recognize that we may be wrong, which leads us to motion. Motion is the number one thing that we're looking for or looking to return. So specificity, specificity is not the number one necessity. Okay? 
We spoke just before this about multiple landmarks helping to better identify the region that we may be looking for. So as in the case of say L4, L5, or L6, depending on how that person's built, the first, or the lowest rather, lumbar vertebrae. The easiest way to identify is not by tracing the iliac crests. One of the reasons it's not the easiest is because BMI, right, so body mass index, which is another way of saying body composition. Now BMI, a higher BMI does not necessarily coordinate to one type of tissue or another. What it does is it suggests that people have more tissue, more soft tissue. So it could be subcutaneous fat, it could be muscle. But what we know is a higher BMI tends to obscure bony landmarks, whether it's muscle or subcutaneous fat. So tracing the iliac crest to find uh, PSIS may not be the easiest thing to do, or finding the sacral base, it may not be the easiest thing to do because it's easy for soft tissues to obscure that. So what would I suggest? The easiest and most palpable landmark with relation to the lowest lumbar vertebrae is the sacrum. We know what's in the midline, we know it is less likely to be completely obscured by soft tissue, and we know that the first bony prominence above it, which is not always the easiest thing to find because it may be quite far anterior and also covered by soft tissues, but we know that the sacrum is a more reliable landmark to find the lowest lumbar vertebrae, be it L4, L5, or L6. So I would say pick the most likely, most identifiable landmark and use multiple landmarks. As another kind of corollary, how would I suggest finding PSIS? Well, we know that tracing the iliac crest is not always the easiest thing to do because it can be obscured by muscle or subcutaneous fat. So again, what we do is we use the sacrum as our centerpiece and we understand that lateral to the sacrum is going to be the PSIS. So we palpate the sacrum and look at either side of it and that may be an easier, possibly more reliable way to find the PSIS. Not been tested, but it is a hypothesis that I'm willing to put out for testing uh, as we go forward. So again, moving from the known to the unknown. The known quantity for the PSIS or for the, for the lowest lumbar vertebrae is the sacrum. It's the easiest to identify, least likely to be obscured by soft tissue. Right? And it is highly related to those other structures, whether it be PSIS, uh, the coccyx if we're looking for that, the inferior lateral, lateral angles, uh, where all these things, the lowest lumbar vertebrae, are easily identified off of a central known landmark. <clears throat> but then what ends up happening is we're able to identify these things and triangulate and better identify anything else that we may be looking for. All right, so specificity is not the number one necessity. Move from the known to the unknown. Use as many known pieces of information as you can to find whatever you may be looking to identify. Now the final concept, how do I move from the known to the unknown? Or how would I identify something, get to one thing from another thing? Right? In a very colloquial fashion, this catch line, catch phrase or tagline is get as much as you can touch. So using broad contact, as much contact area as you can have with a structure, with multiple structures, so that you can identify them all at the same time. So using multiple landmarks at the same time, a broad hand contact, using the forearm, using your torso as a practitioner helps to greater triangulate, greater take in more sensory information as the practitioner and then further identify or zero in. Because we're not necessarily trying to identify a specific vertebral level or a specific group, we're trying to identify the vertebrae or the ribs or the other structures that are not moving as they are intended to. To do that, if we take a greater sampling, so using broader contact as opposed to specific contact, we're able to better triangulate, better identify, better zoom into the area that's not moving because we have comparative analysis. So the three concepts, just to reiterate them, and we will show them through subsequent videos, this one included, so we'll move through them sequentially. Specificity is not the number one necessity. You know, in brackets, the number one necessity is identifying lack of motion. Okay? Moving from the known to the unknown. So I can place my hand over most people's lumbar columns, right? So I can know that I'm in the lumbar column. And what I don't know is which vertebrae are, are or are not moving. But if I sample them at the same time, I can identify that. So moving from the known to the unknown. <clears throat> and then get as much as you can touch. That we just briefly touched on, but the broader the contact, the larger amount of surface area of the practitioner in contact with the patient in a respectful fashion, the better I can zero in on, the better I can sample multiple things at the same time and identify the structures that are, are or are not moving. So specificity is not the number one necessity. Move from the known to the unknown. Get as much as you can touch. 
So we'll go ahead and we'll move on to demonstrations now. So we're here talking about the first concept with palpation and we're going to make my hands more visible than anything else. The number one concept, or the first concept rather, is specificity is not the number one necessity. I have the patient in prone just to give a general overview of this. So as opposed to identifying the PSIS, identifying the sacrum, identifying L4, L5, uh, whatever you want to, what I can simply do is broadly observe the entire area. My concern isn't what is L5 doing, what is L4 doing. My concern in osteopathic treatment or treatment of any manual therapeutic uh, modality is what is not moving. That's all I want to identify. I'm not absolutely concerned with which vertebrae it is, which rib it is. Also consider that we understand accuracy is minimal so we're not aiming for it, we're understanding that that is a, re a real problem, so we build that into our algorithm here. So if I wanted to know what the lumbar column was doing, all I have to do is I can do a spring test, right? So I'm on a sacrum now, it may not be perfectly visible in the video, but I can spring through the lumbars. Now I don't absolutely trust that a ton because the patient is in extension bias position being in prone. It's not a lot of extension, but it's extension bias, so it's flattened out. What I would rather do, very simply, is just broadly cover the lumbar region. Now, I have a thumb bar, right? So I join my thumbs. So this is also using one of the other concepts here, get as much as you can touch. Also, contact is control and control is safety. We can start to meld these things together. But what I do here is I just broadly contact the lumbar region. So my hand understands, the heel of my hand understands where the sacrum is. I drop in because I've got a landmark, I've got the sacrum, I drop into the lumbar column and to create motion, I can use a patient active approach. All I have to do is ask the patient to take a deep breath. So take a deep breath for me. Right, and out. Now in a comparative sense, if I was to say something wasn't moving as well, it would be the low lumbar region. Now I can repeat this process in the thoracic region. So I can use the entirety of the heel of my hands, both hands, and my thumbs to give me the information that I want. So I can come broadly through the thoracic region, take a deep breath for me, and let it out. Okay, the mid to upper thoracic region is not moving as well. The way that I identify that is by not necessarily being specific and asking what each vertebrae is doing, I get them to move as a unit and I palpate them as a unit. Ways to do that are by using my hands to the best of my capacity and spreading them out. So instead of being on one point, I am on many because I understand that specificity is not the number one necessity.